After completing this episode, you should be able to identify key parts of the ear and ways to preserve your hearing. We use our hearing virtually every waking moment of the day. Hearing provides us with the soundtrack to life. Hearing loss is almost always a gradual process, coming after repeated exposures to high noise. So we don't often think of protecting our hearing until we've experienced a significant hearing loss. There are steps you can take to protect your hearing. Wear hearing protection. Have your hearing checked once a year. Maintain good ear hygiene by cleaning your ears regularly and avoid high noise levels when at all possible. Let's take a look at how hearing works. Sounds are vibrations or air pressures that travel through the outer ear and down into the ear canal where they vibrate the eardrum. The vibrating eardrum transmits the waves through three small ear bones to fluid in the cochlea. The cochlea is lined with tiny hair-like structures, cilia, that convert the vibration into electrical impulses interpreted by the brain as sound. What is that? Sound waves travel through the outer ear into the ear canal where they vibrate the eardrum. The vibrating eardrum transmits the waves through three small ear bones for the fluid in the cochlea. The cochlea is lined with tiny hair-like structures called cilia, which convert the vibrations into electrical impulses interpreted by the brain as sound. Now I got it! Were you listening on full power? Listen up! Today we're going to learn what's going to happen to years if you don't take care of them. After completing this episode, you should be able to identify ways in which hearing loss can occur. Hearing loss most often occurs with repeated long-term exposure to loud noise. Other causes of hearing loss include physical injury, sickness, and aging. What you said? Most hearing loss occurs gradually over time with long-term exposure to high noise. This type of hearing loss is referred to as chronic. Harmful noise damages the tiny hair-like structures within the cochlea and creates hearing deficiencies. Hearing can recover within a few hours if the exposure is limited. But with repeated exposure to loud noise, damage can be permanent. There are instances where a single exposure to harmful noise can produce hearing loss. Such damage is called traumatic or acute hearing loss. Gunshots, horns, alarms or explosions are examples of extreme sounds that can impact hearing in a single event. Physical injuries or sickness can also permanently damage your hearing. Let's see if your ears are working. Hey cameraman, is there any wax in there? You know how loud your day can be. To some, it's the sound of success. To others, it can be a literal pain in the brain. After completing this episode, you should be able to define threshold shift and describe its effect on hearing. The ear sensitivity to sound decreases as a measure of protection when exposed to noise. This change to hearing level is referred to as a threshold shift and can be temporary, chronic, or permanent. After experiencing a threshold shift, only sounds above a certain level can be heard. You may lose the ability to hear softer sounds, for example, or your hearing may become muffled. The degree to which your hearing is affected by threshold shifts is determined by the level of sound and your time of exposure. Exposure to moderately loud noises over time can lead to threshold shifts in your hearing. With temporary shifts, your hearing may return to normal in a few hours. After prolonged exposure to harmful noise, however, the shift can become permanent, causing what is known as chronic hearing loss. The early symptoms of chronic hearing loss may be subtle and not easily recognized. High frequencies are lost first. For example, you may no longer be able to hear clearly the voices of women or children. Traumatic or acute threshold shifts, on the other hand, can occur with one exposure to extremely high noise above 140 decibels. 
In these cases, there is immediate and possibly permanent damage to hearing. You may experience pain in your ears and difficulty hearing. Possible symptoms include dizziness and loss of balance. Your best protection against threshold shifts is to use hearing conservation techniques, especially proper hearing protection. Our environment is often loud and getting louder all the time. To preserve our hearing, we need to understand the characteristics of sound and when to block out the volume. After completing this episode, you should be able to describe how the characteristics of sound can affect hearing and identify the decibel level at which hearing is in jeopardy. The characteristics of sound and the duration of exposure determine the severity of possible damage to the ear and degree of hearing loss. These characteristics fall into three distinct categories. The first and most influential is a sound's loudness or intensity, which is measured in decibels or dBs. The higher the number, the greater the chance of hearing damage. Most common office environments with ordinary conversation average 50 to 60 decibels. A busy city street or noisy restaurant can reach 80 decibels. The average industrial work environment is around 85 dB. Although sensitivity to sound varies between individuals, you should wear hearing protection if the noise level averages above 85 dB. Another hazard is sound frequency or pitch. Higher frequency sounds have a greater potential for damaging hearing than lower frequency sounds. Again, sensitivity to sound will differ between individuals. The length of exposure to hazardous sound is the final key factor. Constant exposure to hazardous sound will contribute to hearing loss, even if the sound seems low. Again, if your work area averages 85 decibels or above, you should wear hearing protection. A good rule of thumb is if you have difficulty hearing a conversation from two feet away, that environment is probably hazardous to your hearing. Don't protect your hearing, you will lose the jar of noise. After completing this episode, you should be able to describe the detrimental effects of loud noise and identify and describe various types of hearing protection. The characteristics of sound determine the potential damage to our hearing. Sound frequency, loudness, and length of exposure are the key factors in hearing loss. One indicator of hazardous sound levels is if you hear ringing in your ears after leaving the environment. This high-pitched ringing is known as tinnitus. You may also have difficulty hearing normal conversation, music, or television. If you experience these symptoms, have your hearing checked by a qualified professional. Another negative effect of loud noise is distraction, which may lead to lapses in awareness or job performance. Loud noise can be aggravating, increasing stress levels and contributing to mistakes from not receiving proper information. Let's use our hearing protection to keep the groove and working smooth. Here's some different types of hearing protection. Earplugs are the most common form of hearing protection and are divided into two categories, disposable and reusable. Disposable plugs are formable, easily kneaded into shape, and fit snugly into the ear canal protecting the inner ear from noise, dirt, and grease. Reusable plugs come in a wide variety of styles. They are pre-molded or custom-made to fit you, so you don't need to shape them. Canal caps are earplugs fitted on a molded headband. The headband keeps uniform pressure on both earplugs, efficiently shielding your ears. Ear muffs cover the ears completely with cushions filled with foam, liquid, or air. These are the best protection for your ears. Earmuffs are good for particularly dirty environments and for temporary or short-term protection. 
The most important thing is to use the hearing protection that's right for you. What's the best protection for your ears? Well, let's get a scouting report on hearing protection. After completing this episode, you should be able to describe the advantages and disadvantages of different hearing protection types. Earplugs come in two varieties, disposable and reusable. Disposable earplugs have the advantage of single use. They're sanitary and aren't as expensive as the reusable kind. They will conform to the shape of different kinds of ear canals. The biggest disadvantage is that they must be formed each time you insert them. To insert disposable plugs, first make sure that your hands are clean. Gently roll the plug between your thumb and forefinger. With your other hand, reach behind your head and gently pull your ear back. Insert the plug into the ear canal and maintain pressure on the plug with a fingertip until it expands. You'll know if the plugs are properly inserted if placing a hand over your ear does not reduce work area noise. Reusable earplugs come in a wide variety of styles. They are custom fit to you and don't need to be formed. A string attachment can be added to keep them around your neck at all times, so you're less likely to forget to wear them. The disadvantages are that reusable plugs must be fitted by a qualified specialist and cleaned regularly. Canal caps are another example of reusable hearing protection. Held in place by a flexible headband, they're easily added to other protective equipment. Be careful, though, that the plugs fit securely within the ear canal. The biggest disadvantage of canal caps is they need to be cleaned regularly to prevent infection. Earmuffs are good for temporary use in particularly dirty environments. Earmuffs generally provide the most effective protection, but can be bulky or uncomfortable, especially in hot weather. When wearing eyeglasses or safety glasses, make sure the temples are not so thick as to break the seal between the cushions and ears. This seal must be tight to keep out unwanted sound. Combining earmuffs with earplugs provides an extra measure of protection in extremely noisy environments, like those above 105 decibels. Now you can choose the right hearing protection for you! We keep our machinery running smoothly by regular maintenance. Same thing as your ear! After completing this episode, you should be able to describe proper ear care. The first thing to do is keep your ears clean. The good news is, ears are sort of self-cleaning. Use a regular washcloth to clean the outer ear, but leave the inside of the ear alone. Ear wax will come out on its own, loosened by the washcloth and the chewing of food. Don't put anything into the ear canals. Avoid getting water in your ears when showering. Moisture in the ears can lead to infection. If you suspect that you are in a high noise environment, wear hearing protection and talk to your supervisor. They will take the appropriate action. Have your hearing checked regularly by a professional. And finally, wear the right protective equipment at work and at home. Let's keep the joy noise in your life. Bye-bye. <laughs>